come on to the Mini Afterburner uh, Extruder. This is direct drive. It's new with the Voron 0.1, and I think it's going to be a great extruder. All right, these are the first pieces in, that we're going to prep, and they're all going to need heat inserts. Um, both ends of these tubes, this end here, and then these two pieces here. Let's start off with this piece first. That one's done. I'm going to go ahead and do this one next. I've got that set in there. I'm just going to gently push it in. And you got to do both sides of these, so just flip them over. Maybe let them cool off a little bit too because they're still a little hot. All right, now here's the other sides. Okay, those are done. Okay, you're going to need to get a few parts out um, from the Bontech kit. One of them is this gear. I actually pulled off these bearings, and there's another part on there. The other thing you're going to need to do is this needs to be no longer than three millimeters at the end. Um, there's a jig that you can print, which I'm currently printing, and I'm then going to sand down whatever's above three millimeters. So this, this part's going to get a little messy. For these parts here, you're also going to need some lube. I'm going to use this uh, Super Lube Synthetic Grease. All right, this is Greg from the future. You may notice looking at these different shafts, the one on the left is the clone shaft, and you can see that there's some teeth there. Well, the problem with those teeth is that they don't allow the MR85 bearing to sit flush, so you either need to file those down or use the genuine Bontech gear on the right, which is what I ended up doing. Those are only about $4 US if you want to get that extra part. This is the jig that comes as one of the parts, but basically put on the jig and then if you have anything protruding outside of that, that needs to be sanded down a little bit. It's really close, but I'm going to I'm gonna just go ahead and sand it anyway. I mean, there's just a little bit there that needs to come off, but you want this to be less than three millimeters. So I'm using this little finger sander, I'm just lightly sanding. You probably don't want to do this over your uh, gears like I just did. So keep the area kind of clean. Probably going to take a little bit, maybe 5-10 minutes. Alright, after sanding I think I've got it. Um, you can see I've basically got it flush now with the 3D printed part, which I may have sanded down a little bit too. Okay, and after the sanding, uh, it looks like this, so the, the uh, bearing, M85 bearing fits on there just fine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lube these up. Um, I'm going to take my super lube, apply a real small bit, just enough to coat it, but not real heavy. And then I'm going to insert them over this. I'm going to get a little bit of gunk on these too, just a little tiny bit, not a ton. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to insert it into this piece. And that should be about it in terms of the lube. Okay, for this piece here, you're going to need um, <clears throat> this little idler gear with the teeth. Um, and this one does not have a grub screw. So just insert it in and insert the, the little black bearings on the piece. And have some lube in there and just fit it in. And make sure the gear, the teeth are on the right hand side. And you want this to be flush with the end. Basically just like the picture. The picture does have it flush with this, but I don't believe it needs to be exactly flush because this is less than three millimeters. And the other M85 bearing <clears throat> is gonna sit in this hole right here in this piece. It's a little bit of a compression fit but it should fit and it should be able to go flush. So there we go, feels pretty good. Okay, it also says to check that the bearings um, fit. So these go on just fine. This one also comes on and off just fine. If, if it's uh, hard, then you probably need to sand it down a little bit. You don't want it rough. Okay, now you're gonna take your gear, your large piece with the gear, and you're gonna insert it into here. Make sure your M85 bearing is off. After that, you're going to take this piece, which does have a set screw, and you're gonna slide it on. And what you wanna do is make sure your set screw 
can contact that flat piece to get more leverage. Also, make sure you put your blue Loctite on there to keep it in place. Okay, and here I am putting the set screw in. You can see a tiny bit of blue lo um, Permatec on there. And give it a good twist. Okay, now we're gonna need seven millimeters of PFTE that sticks out of this ext uh, the extruder. So what I did is I stuck this in and I drew a line to where it came flush with this. And then I pulled it out and I took my, um, I took my calipers here and then I marked it, seven millimeters. So now I'm going to use this PFTE cutter and just cut it right on the blue line. All right, and after cutting, it looks pretty good. It's probably a, might even be a hair longer than seven, but right, right about there. Okay, here's about what it should look like. Um, so you can go on to the next step. One thing that I'll say too is don't worry about the M85 bearings because those are gonna be inserted later. Next up, we're going to be inserting the fans into the hot end, or the extruder mount. You can see here on the bottom, there are part cooling ducts. So the blower fans are going to go downward where the airflow is going through those ducts. That's going to be the first one we're going to insert is going to be this one on the left. So this one is going to go in just like this, where again, this opening is on the bottom. And then you're going to carefully put it in there and slide it in. And just be careful on these parts make sure you don't bump any because those you don't want those breaking and now i'm going to insert the fan into this um, one thing i did do is move the wires up because they're going to have to run this way and then you just kind of angle it in and then it should just snap into place like that uh, make sure and on you want the air blowing this way and in my case um that that's correct so the arrow shows the airflow direction so that's what you want okay and the last fan just goes in here make sure that the label is on the inside um, something else that I recommend doing is uh, making sure that you are get that in focus making sure that you pull the wires out for this fan because otherwise it's going to be in the corner blocking this one um, and it's ideal to do that before you put it in there there we have it fans are ready to go now we're at the hot end part and i'm going to need to take this piece off if you have a stock dragon hot end this has to come off and you're going to do that by unscrewing these little guys here with a ball and screwdriver or the included allen wrench whichever one you feel like using okay now that the fans are done we're going to install the hot end before we do that though we're going to have the heater cartridge installed as well as the thermistor also make sure that when you install it the uh, nozzle part has to be closest to the fan. Okay, so next I'm going to put in the heater cartridge as well as the thermistor. These are just like E3Ds um, where you want to just tighten it up to where it's not moving around on you. It's going to require a little bit of force but you don't want to over tighten it either. I think that's going to work fine. Please still have your MR85 bearing or <clears throat> because you're going to need to insert it into this little hole here, into the next step. Okay, if you're like me and you have sausage fingers, the best way to get this bearing in is to use an Allen key to hold it over and just kind of press it in. So I did that and I got mine in. I also had a little bit of plastic in there that I cleaned out with this file. I just kind of rubbed it around, but um, ultimately I got it in. So I think it needs to be flush. So you may have to push it down a little bit. just um this this technique worked pretty good yeah there we go okay now we're going to insert three m335s through here those should all just go straight in like that now this piece with the bearing the bearing in the gear is going to go in the middle screw and this next piece here with the heat insert is going to go right there okay now this part we're just gonna kind of slide this in we're supposed to push the gear back all the way and then you just kind of slide it into place there we go okay yeah i fiddled with it a little more and got it all the way flush um it looks like the pfte is lined up with the heat sink now so that's a good thing 
Um, everything here seems to be right. Now we're going to close it up, push the screws forward. And with any luck, everything will line up like it's supposed to. I'm going to try to line it up with the bearing first, I think. There we go. Okay, after messing with it for a little bit, I got them in easily. Um, they're just kind of, it's just an alignment thing really, but yeah, the bearing is fitting in there just right, so it looks flush. And now I'm going to insert this direct feed extruder part. It just goes right in here. And now we're going to put two M330s in here to tie everything together. Okay, I got my M330s in here and I just need to tighten them down. They went in just right. And they're going to lock into those heat inserts that are in that part in the back. So they go in pretty tight. And then I just put this uh, spring in for the tension and that's pretty much it. Okay, now you're supposed to check for binding. Nothing, I don't really feel anything. So everything's looking good. The other thing is to make sure this shaft doesn't protrude past the face, which it doesn't. 